Welcome back, Filmholics. My name is Kyle Kerry, but in this channel, you find anything and everything filmmaking. So today, we're going to react to this video called Best Shots of All Time Part 1. So this could be only part one of the reaction that I'm doing, but it is some of the best cinematic shots in history. So let's go check that out. So before I start this reaction to this video, I gotta let you guys know who made the video, and that is Cinefix. They are pretty cool. I love the compilation of shots that they get from cinema, and I just, I, it makes me, whenever I watch any of their videos a while back, it just made me more inspired to watch films and to make films and just films in general. So let's go ahead and start this out. We've been tossing around the idea of a best shots list for a while now, but we're not sure we could ever narrow it down to just 10. So instead, we're doing five, and then five more, and then five, five each more time. that, and so on and so forth. We've got a whole series planned looking at our favorite shots based on their angles, subject relationships, movement, purpose, and today, their size. These are our five picks for the best shots of all time, part one. First up, we're looking at the close-up, which is a shot you're probably pretty familiar with, but just in case you're not, it's a close shot on someone's face that includes all of their features, but no more than a little bit of their neck and the top of their head, if that. And sure, you can shoot a close-up of all kinds of stuff. In that sense, a close-up is just a closer-than-normal look at anything. And we'll get back to that kind of close-up in a later list, but for this one, we're looking at shots of people. And in the people sense, the close-up at its most essential focuses us in on human emotion, expressivity, and it does it in an intimate way. It provides us a heightened attention to the details of the character's face and the nuance that comes with it. Looking at a true close-up on screen is an experience that replicates the nearness that's almost always It's the Spielberg the shot. Well, one where it goes from so medium to or a wide to a close-up. That's about it. While a wider close-up can feel like a leaned-in flirtation at a loud bar, a really tight close-up belongs squarely in the realm of serious intimacy. Familiar, unfamiliar. But for our first pick, there's absolutely nothing as effective of course. as classic essential and iconic in its use of the close-up as Carl Theodore Dreyer's it's what popularized it in the passion of Joan of Arc nearly 100 years ago This one shot quite literally changed the face of filmmaking forever and cemented the close-up as cinema's trump card for feelings. That's so cool. <laughs> the other end of the spectrum, we have the long shot or wide shot. Yes. Or full shot. This was the original frame, the classic view inherited from the theater that we were talking about. Because unlike the close-up, in the my opinion, shot, the only way to ever film a uh, fight scene is well, there are other ways, but if I were to film a fight scene, it would be wide angle so you can see all the action with real stunts just like John Wick or any of the old uh, martial art movies space the long shot makes it an important part of its composition and as a theater a good director creatively blocks a long shot arranging their figures in space to illuminate the subtext of the scene and good actors use their whole bodies to express things their faces no longer can our second pick our favorite version has to be in the Vito Corleone flashbacks of the break. of course the Godfather has to get So well planned. Corleone, who you might remember as Marlon Brando from the original Godfather, loses his job. He goes with his neighbor to rob a house, which is what lands us here. And this standoff gives us one of the most dramatically effective long shots we've ever seen. This moment is tension in a bottle, an entire conflict in a single frame. And it's not just that it makes for absolutely poster-worthy imagery. The long it shot really does so. Perfect choice for this moment in the story. Imagine separating this into cuts, separating Clemenza and the like modern day where you would just cut everything and put like 32 cuts into like a few seconds. Fuck that. No. This is simple. It just shows composition at its best, planning and directing at its best. Coppola. Ooh. Halfway between the close up and the long shot is the medium shot. Neither close the shot I always forget to do. <laughs> nor far enough to really go wild with spatial relationships. The middle shot, 
but it has its place too. Like the middle child, the medium child is a was fantastic good. mediator, a compromise shot. Not a compromise in the sense that it's the jack of all trades and master of none. No, it's a compromise in that it provides you with some access to both intimacy and space. This makes it the perfect shot for connecting the two, comparing or contrasting, for tying the emotionality to the physicality. At its best, a medium shot can show us how a character feels about their surrounding, either environmental or human. It connects their face and thus their emotions to the things around them. Our third pick, we're rather partial to a medium shot in Jake LaMotta's final fight with Raging, Raging Bull. From Raging Bull. Oh, this shot trips me out every time. It's such a simple shot, but it just... Oh, I think about this whenever I go to the gym or whenever I just need to pull my weight and go through something. <sighs> Crowd gets quiet. Everything slows down. Everything's about to build. Build. Oh, such a good shot. And just before he gets what he asks for, the film slows. It exhales. It coils itself up quietly. And first we get this medium shot, and then we get this one. And here, everything shifts. The crowd goes quiet, recedes into the darkness. Robinson exactly. goes closer. The lighting intensifies. We hold our breath, and then the pot boils over, and it explodes. This shot is absolutely terrifying. The men are alone out there, swallowed up by the ring, and we can see how they feel about it. Or in this case, how they feel yeah. about it. It's exactly that you feel De Niro's immense fear and, and anticipation about the fight. This shot would lose its context, its intentional sense of distance from the world outside the ring. And along, we would lose the emotion, the detail of their faces, the powerful and potent twisted humanity, which is why this is a great example of a medium shot at its best. For our next actual category, we're looking at the extreme close ups. They're shots that are so tight they can. These are some of my favorite shots ever because they're so different and, in, and not in fighting the opposite of that it's like so you're just like you're not supposed to ever be that close to a face and it just makes you feel unease and, and just so many different emotions not really something most people have a schema for. Scientific emotional exactly. intelligence studies often stream close up is the filmmaker's domain. There are some absolutely incredible examples of this. Eyes in Blade Runner, Suspiria. Blade Runner would be my favorite. A mouth in the man who wasn't there. A hand in the gladiator. Feet in the tree of life and 12 years a slave. The Matrix, Clockers, and Casino all innovate by using reflections to combine the micro with the macro. But for our favorite use of the extreme close up, we're looking at Psycho, which has some incredible of course. Eye photography. However, for this slot, we're more interested Alfred Hitchcock. Much like Marion Crane, the psycho shower sequence in that iconic screen. But just in and in this incredibly famous sequence, we get this quick second long shot. That is, we think the perfect use for an extreme close-up it is jarring sudden incredibly shocking and in your face it the original if you would like an jump invasion, scare like an attack. It's and it's well effective because you anticipate it and there's a payoff not like most jump scares where it's like a box of cheeses or something says everything hitchcock wants it to and finally pull Last all one. the way back to the other far end of the spectrum we're finished and my absolute favorite types of shots because it's just it, if you pull it off if you have the right set design the right composition you're just like what what like blade runner 2049 just all the long shots i was just like smallness in the face of the but yeah. Like the long shot, the extreme long is about a relationship between people and a space. But like the extreme close up, it uses the human form as shape in a symbolic image, not as an expressive medium. But for our last slot, we don't think it's very controversial at all for us to pick a David Lean shot. One from Lawrence of Arabia. After of course. Turned back this is the iconic one. One where he comes from the sunset. Well, not sunset, but horizon. Oh, this one. Oh. This is the 
broad strokes of the movement and the frame itself that communicates a small man that's larger than life, which is why it's such a great extreme lock. When choosing a oh, that was scale, good. it's all about what you opt to include in the frame and what you don't that directs the viewer's attention and says, this is important, look for meaning here, not here. Us as the viewer. And it's about proximity. About this makes me want to watch all of those movies of again. ...of nearness and farness with people we've interacted with to create an impression of intimacy or the lack thereof. And these five examples and their honorable mentions keep all of this in mind and use these effects to tell the story and to invite the viewer to feel a certain way about which is why they're our picks for some of the best shots of all time part one which honestly all of us can agree on but that ends the reaction guys sorry if i didn't talk that much it was a lot of just watching and just appreciating the the, the work put into classic movies in general or just movies in general i mean and i just i want a lot of people to appreciate that more and that's why i kind of decided to react to this but that's it again guys, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and dream on.